Hello everyone. Welcome to today's video. Now, as you can see, I'm dressed a little bit crazy and I'm blowing bubbles. I usually don't start my videos that way. But you know, today I just feel like being silly. So if you want to pause the video and go dress up in something silly when you listen to this story, you can do that. Because we can be silly if we want to, and we can still get work done. So today, I'm going to read you a new story. It's called Beatrix Potter. And it's written and illustrated by Alexandra Walner. So in the coming weeks, we're going to begin to read nonfiction books about real people, animals, and things. This book is a biography about Beatrix Potter. A biography is a true story about someone's life. So I want to know, what do you wonder about Beatrix Potter so far, but just by looking at the picture? She lived in England in 1866, about 150 years ago. She loved science, animals, and drawing. So, as always, when we start our reading videos, make sure you have a reading buddy with you. That could be a person, or it could be a stuffed animal, or a toy that you really like. So that you can pause the video when I ask you what you're wondering, and you can talk to your buddy. So this is my buddy Sledder. I'm going to put him right over here so he doesn't get in the way of the pictures. Okay, here we go. Get ready to wonder and listen to this wonderful story. Helen Beatrix Potter was born in London, England on July 28, 1866. She was the first child of her parents, Rupert and Helen Potter. Her brother Bertram was born five years later. Like many children in wealthy English families, Beatrix and Bertram didn't see much of their parents. They were left in the care of a governess. Instead of going to school, they had their lessons at home. They hardly saw other children. Occasionally, their parents would allow them to play with their cousins. Beatrix and Bertram were lonely. They spent a lot of time drawing and painting flowers and animals. Their many pets became their only friends. Without the adults knowing, they hid rabbits, frogs, lizards, newts, that's another type of lizard, snakes, salamanders, bats, mice, and a turtle. Even after the pets died, they saved the skeletons and drew the bones. Beatrix was especially fond of two pet mice named Hunka Munka and Apply Dapply, and a rabbit named Peter. Get ready to wonder, or answer this question. What did you learn about Beatrix Potter as a child? Share with your reading buddy. Mr. and Mrs. Potter encouraged Beatrix and Bertram to study art. Beatrix's father enjoyed photography and collected paintings. When Beatrix was old enough, he took her to museums. He introduced her to John Everett Malias, a famous painter, who showed her his studio. Thanks to her father, Beatrix saw how an artist lived and worked. In summers, Beatrix went to Scotland with her family. The potters rented different houses near the woods. Beatrix kept a diary written in her own code. The sights and sounds of the woods were like magic to her. And everything was romantic in my imagination. She also liked to paint wildflowers and small woodland animals. Her years of practice made her an excellent painter. 
What happened in Beatrix's life that made her interested in painting? Tell your reading buddy. When Beatrix was 17, her parents sent Bertram, remember that's her brother, to boarding school. So boarding school is like a school that you live at. So he's being sent away. Now she was lonelier than ever. Her mother hired Annie Carter to be her companion. Annie was only three years older than Beatrix. It was the first time Beatrix had a girlfriend. Now I think they're talking about just a friend that's a girl here. So she's really excited. It's her first friend. She loved Annie and enjoyed her company, but two years later, Annie got married and moved away. Hmm. Beatrix was alone again. She wrote, I cannot rest, I must draw. When I have a bad time, come over me. It is a strong desire than ever. Bad times came over her often. Throughout her life, she had periods of bronchitis and rheumatic fever, which left her heart weak. Her mother and father were strict. As Beatrix grew older, she wished she could make her own decisions. Beatrix got a pet rabbit named Bounce. She painted him from all angles wearing human clothes, as if he were a person. A greeting card company bought some of these paintings. They were published along with some verses in a booklet called A Happy Pair. But the money she earned from that was not enough to support herself. She had to live with her parents. One night when Beatrix was particularly lonely and there was no one to talk to, she wrote a letter to a little boy named Noel. He was the son of her former friend, Annie Carter. My dear Noel, I don't know what to write you, so I shall tell you a story about four little rabbits whose names are Flopsy, Mopsy, Cottontail, and Peter. Sorry about that. My cats were playing with a piece of trash. It's really loud. So she's writing a letter to Noel. She wrote the first version of the tale of Peter Rabbit, although she didn't know it at the time. She didn't think about writing other stories because she was more interested in making drawings and keeping notes on science. So what happened in Beatrix's life that helped her get the idea for um, Peter Rabbit? The story that Miss Sneak read. Tell your reading buddy. When Beatrix was in her 20s, she painted the mushrooms she had collected in Scotland during the summer vacations. She had learned a great deal about them. She noted in her diary that rotted mushrooms might be used in cancer research. Beatrix wanted to publish a report and sell 300 paintings of mushrooms she had completed. Sadly, her research was not taken seriously. Because she lived during a time when men considered themselves the experts in the study of science, her work was not accepted. Beatrix was hurt because she felt she knew more about mushrooms than almost anyone in England. Again, Beatrix turned to animals for comfort. She borrowed back the letter she had written to Noel, rewriting the story about the four little rabbits. Although she sent it to several publishers, none wanted it. Beatrix did not give up. In 1901, she decided to have 250 copies of the story printed herself. Beatrix gave them to friends. The rest she left with local bookstores. 
She was encouraged when they quickly sold out. An editor at Frederick Warren Publishers saw one of the books. He wanted her to make the drawings larger and rewrite the story. Beatrix was excited. She agreed to rewrite the text, but would not enlarge the pictures. The book needed to be small, she told him, so that children's hands could hold it easily. Now, if you haven't seen the Peter Rabbit book before, I have it right here. It's small, just like she said, for children's hands. It's so cute. Beatrix got her way, and the tale of Peter Rabbit was published in 1902, when Beatrix was 36 years old. The book was very popular and made a lot of money for her. So what did you learn in the part of the story I just read? A lot happened. Today we learned about Beatrix Potter's life from childhood to age 36. What did you learn about Beatrix Potter that surprised you? Pause the video and tell your reading buddy. This is a time when you can stop the video and break it up into two parts. But if you're ready to keep going and you want to hear the other part of this story, then you can keep listening. This will be part two. So, we just learned that Beatrix Potter became wealthy because of her book, The Tale of Peter Rabbit. Today, or in this part of the video, we're going to learn about her time at Hilltop Farm on the English countryside. Here we go. In 1905, Beatrix bought Hilltop Farm in the rural Lake District of England, but Beatrix remained living at home because that was expected of an unmarried daughter. When she could get away from her parents, she stayed at Hilltop and wrote tales of mice, rabbits, squirrels, foxes, cats, dogs, and farm animals. She remembered how lonely she had been as a child. Animals always made her feel better. She wanted to write about animal friends for other lonely children. She wrote of a pet hedgehog named Mrs. Tiggywinkle and a pet duck called Jemima Puddle Duck. When Beatrix wasn't hiding, she tended to her garden and took care of her animals. She kept cows, sheep, pigs, chickens. Finally, Beatrix was doing what she wanted and she was happy. Look at her beautiful farm. What'd you learn about Beatrix from this page? Tell your reading buddy. Beatrix sent her stories to Norman Warren who was her new editor. They wrote many letters to each other, and after a while, they fell in love. In 1905, Norman proposed to Beatrix, and although her parents did not want her to marry, she accepted. But she never married Norman. Suddenly, he became sick and died. Beatrix was very sad. She spent a lot of time writing more stories. All of her books were popular. In 1909, Beatrix bought another farm called Castle Cottage. During the purchase, she met a lawyer named William Helis. They both enjoyed animals and farming. They fell in love and were engaged in 1912. Again, Mr. and Mrs. Potter disapproved. That means her parents did not want her to marry this man. Even so, in 1913, Beatrix married William and they moved to the castle cottage. Beatrix was happy with William. She wasn't lonely anymore. After her marriage, she hardly wrote and painted at all. Her eyesight was getting weak and she preferred to spend her time with her animals and farming. Beatrix bought many surrounding farms and turned the houses into museums. She also wanted to keep the woods and fields the way they were. So she had footpaths created for tourists 
who visited the lakes. This way, they would not step on her wildflowers and disturb the small animals in their home. As Beatrix grew older, she spent most of her time raising Herdwick sheep. They won many prizes at the local county fairs. The Herdwick Sheep Breeders Association elected her as their first and only woman president. So this is not the president of the United States. It's the president of the Sheep Breeders Association. But that's still really exciting for her. Beatrix died on December 22, 1943, at the age of 77. She had written 23 tales and other books which were read by children around the world. Even though Beatrix was famous, she maintained a private and modest life. If I have done anything, even a little, to help small children on the road to enjoy and appreciate honest, simple pleasures, I have done a bit of good, she said. And that is the end of the story. So this is Beatrix Potter, the book we just read. And this is the book that Beatrix Potter wrote. One of them. There are many of them. So in what ways did Beatrix use her own life to write her stories? Tell your reading buddy. What was the most surprising or interesting thing you learned about Beatrix Potter? Tell your reading buddy. So I want to let you know that you can Google Beatrix Potter and you can find out more about her if you want to. And if you want to share in your Zoom meetings with your teacher or share with your families, you should do that. Thanks for watching this video today. And if you got dressed up and were feeling silly like I was, thanks for joining me. I hope to see you next time. Bye-bye.